You're watching Long Beach Local News. Breaking news, community, politics, sports, entertainment in Long Beach, California. Good afternoon and welcome to the all-new Long Beach Local News Weekly News Update. I'm Yasmin Tanis. And I'm Eric Richards. We begin with a pair of shootings that are under investigation in the mid-city area of Long Beach. Long Beach police gang detectives are continuing their search for suspects in the death of 39-year-old Antonio Macias of Long Beach. He was gunned down on Thursday night at approximately 9.45 p.m. in the 2300 block of Elm Street. The motive for the shooting is unclear, but it is believed to be gang-related. Hours later, another shooting was reported in the 400 block of 17th Street. 911 calls came in at about 1.15 p.m., and when responding officers arrived, they found a male adult with a gunshot wound to the torso. The victim was able to self-transport to a local hospital. His injuries are not considered to be life-threatening. If you have any information regarding either of these shootings, you are urged to contact Long Beach Police Department. Mm -hmm. The YMCA Youth Institute has launched a youth in business kiosk at the beautiful Shoreline Village. Yeah, the kids at the kiosk are selling cell phone accessories. Yasmin was there for the ribbon cutting we got and a grand, grand opening. From Wells Fargo to run our own little kiosk and uh, Bob, who is our person in charge, he came, he came to us with an idea of, and we he pitched us an idea about us wanting to run a kiosk here down at Shoreline Village, and we formed a committee of about 30 people, and we were ready to go for the idea. Well, we've been running the Youth Institute in Long Beach well, for 20 years. Congratulations to these young entrepreneurs on their business launch, and don't forget to visit them and see what they have on offer at their kiosk at Shoreline Village. A 51-year-old man died following a fatal traffic collision that occurred last night. Just after 10 p.m., Long Beach officers responded to Santa Fe and 16th Street after getting reports of a vehicle versus pedestrian accident. When the officers arrived on scene, they found a man unresponsive in the roadway and immediately summoned the fire department. Long Beach Fire did respond and transported the man to a local hospital where he succumbed to his injuries earlier this morning. Now, according to the investigation, the unidentified man was walking in a marked crosswalk on Santa Fe when he was struck by a vehicle that was headed northbound. The driver remained at the scene and is cooperating with the investigation. Now, preliminary information suggests that the victim had consumed some alcohol prior to taking to the roadway, but it's unclear if that played a factor in the crash. That remains under investigation, Yasmin. Mm -hmm. Southwest Airlines has announced that they are adding more flights from Long Beach Airport to various de destinations throughout the U.S., including Las Vegas. The announcement was made last week after the airline acquired additional slots that were vacated by the outgoing JetBlue Airlines. Now, starting October 1st, there will be four daily flights from Long Beach to Oakland. There also will be four weekday flights and three weekend flights from Long Beach to San Jose. There also will be two flights a day on weekends from Long Beach to Las Vegas, which is a great alternative for our three, sometimes four hour drive from our area to <laughs> Vegas. I'll definitely be hopping on one of those. Yeah. The city hosted the LB Climate Fest at Marine Stadium on Saturday morning and invited the community to the open house event for the city's <coughs> climate action and adaptation plan known as CAP. The event featured an unveiling draft of the city's first ever cap and offered residents to provide input on the plan. Now, Mayor Robert Garcia states that the climate change is very serious and it's a serious threat to our planet and our city. It is important for the community to get involved in the critical process and LB Climate Fest presents a milestone opportunity for us to come together to create an effective and successful cap. In 2015, Mayor Robert Garcia signed the, the Compact of Mirrors, also known now as the Global Covenant of Mirrors, signaling the city's support for more targeted efforts aimed at reducing the city's carbon footprint and preparing for climate change. Over the past two years, city staff have collaborated with a scientific working group of experts to determine the impacts of climate change in Long Beach. The CAP will build off existing sustainability measures and take a holistic approach to the economic, social and an environmental well-being of Long Beach to make it a more resilient and sustainable community. Now people can view the city's climate change vulnerability assessment results online and the public is encouraged to join CAP, the CAP conversation on social media by using the hashtag 
C-A-A-P-L-B. And for further information, you can, of course, go to the website. Mm -hmm. Last Thursday, the historic beach house on 5454 Ocean Boulevard, <coughs> known as Heath House, went on the market for $4.5 million with realtor Ben Fisher landing the listing. It was built back in 1939 for the oil man Ronald Wayland Heath and has been owned by the family since over the past 82 years. Now, no one has seen this space besides family members and their friends until now. Heath passed away in 1986, and his widow died in the early 90s. Now, their daughter, Shelley, moved to the house until her death earlier this year. Her two sons now have put up the house for sale. It's a five-bedroom, three-bathroom space with views of both the oceanfront and bay in all its serenity with the first set of neighbors miles away. It also includes a garage for two cars and has a little guest house with a bedroom, kitchenette and a sitting room with a cozy fireplace, not to mention the hot tub and the courtyard between the main and guest house. Yeah, the house is significant as it survived the only tropical st uh, storm in California known as the Lash of St. Francis in 1939 that hit all neighboring beach cottages. This is also due to the fact that it is built on a pier and today the sea level rise is protected by the breakwater distances away from it, keeping it quaint and tranquil, uh, keeping it a quaint and tranquil home to live in. Mm, I definitely want to check that house mm -hmm. out. <laughs> Now coming out at 4 p.m. on the Long Beach local news community calendar, we'll tell you about the Foodway Summit that kicked off over the weekend. Yeah, plus, if you're into collectibles, there's a trade show that you don't want to miss at the convention center. Do you collect anything? I don't, but I will go into that. <laughs> hey, well, we will tell you about those events, plus about a new <coughs> annual event that will showcase our city's most prominent architecture. So make sure you join us at 4 for the LBLN community calendar. And also, don't forget to hit the notifications button on the Facebook page at Long Beach Local News. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube as well at Long Beach Local News to stay on top of the very latest news and information. I'm Yasmin Tanras. And I'm Eric Richards. From all of us here at Long Beach Local News, we thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you at 4.